Aloha kakoa pau. I'm Kaio Pua Fife for the Kiwani Foundation. And I'm here once again with another segment of our series, Voices of Truth, here on Molokai, doing our neighbor island interviews. And we're very pleased today to have with us uh, Mikiala. And your last name that you're going by? Ayao Peskaya. Ayao Peskaya. Mahalo for coming. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, Mikiala. We've been here for a couple of days on Molokai, and we've had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Kupuna and Makua, and uh, we're very pleased that you're here because uh, the people who are watching, the Kanakas who are watching our, our series, some of them are going to identify with you, you know, Hawaiian, female, your age group, and then maybe if we're lucky, even further, maybe they'll connect with some of the things that you do which maybe they would like to do, because you know one of the one of the problems in our uh, in some of our communities is that sometimes there's a lot of frustration that uh, people can't do things, and our contention is, and why we're motivating towards the ultimate possible positive future for Hawaiians is that good things are happening, and people in the community are doing those things, and we're told you're one of those people, although. <laughs> You, you can smile and say, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> at any rate, that's, uh, that's why we're glad that you're here with us today. Oh, mahalo. And generally, we start out by asking you to kind of, you know, kind of fill us in on, you know, who you are, you're, were you born and raised on Molokai, you know? Um, I was born here in Kaunakakai. Kaunakakai, yeah. Um, my mother is uh, Ranette Moanike Ala. Igarta. My father is Reynolds Le Aloha Ayao. Um, my mom, her line comes from, she's a Ka'el. Her mother is a Ka'el mm -hmm. uh, in the Bishaw family. Her father is um, related, or well, he's an Igarta and an Iberos. On my father's side, his um, father was Kwa Kumuhali Ihapai, um, whose parents were. Um, Archibald Hapai and Hattie Keonana Purdy. Um, most people may recognize um, some of those names. Mm -hmm. um, on his mother's side, uh, her name was Harriet Ahiona Ayao. Her married name was Ne, mm -hmm. Harriet Ne. Mm -hmm. She was a longtime historian for Molokai. She was um, born of the last generation in Pelekunu. So that line comes from the north side of Molokai. Um, her parents were. Uh, Edward Haleaniani Ayao and Olivia Kalealoho Kalahui Townsend. Um, both of them were from Molokai. And so those lines kind of go back. After that, all the Hawaiians, after that, never have last names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Hawaiinis, name, but yeah, Luuki yeah. and um, the rest of my kupuna from Pelekunu. Um, the Townsends came from um, England. Mm -hmm. um, they descended a long line of um, Protestant missionary family. Mm -hmm. um, they came in, the Haole side came in, um, lived in Pelikunu and mm -hmm. um, established the church there. And so my great-great-grandfather was, was a minister, mm -hmm. my great-grandfather, my grandmother, and mm -hmm. my father, they're all ministers mm -hmm. for, um, for the Hawaiian Protestant Church. How about this generation? Anybody so uh, picking up the Picking up the cloth, <laughs> so to speak, in this generation, um, in your family? Actually, the interesting thing about my family is, um, given that background, I have nine brothers and sisters, and every one of us has a strong um, pilina, or a relationship with Akua, mm -hmm. um, but we're all of different faiths. No kidding. And so I, even though my father is a Protestant, mm -hmm. Kahu, mm -hmm. we have, um, some of my siblings are, belong to Jehovah's Witness, and um, First Assembly of God. I'm belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. um, so different different kinds of Protestant and we all get along. <laughs> wow, isn't that interesting? <laughs> isn't that interesting? Uh, that's probably a huge story in itself how uh, out of the same family and the same group of siblings you can get so many different... Uh, was it a matter, do you think, uh, so much of uh, each of you individually being attracted to anything, uh, a certain denomination or I think just the circumstances? That or my, even my grandmother, she she um, joined the Seventh Day Adventist Church for a little while. And, 
I mean, I guess all of us, the, the, the point is the Hawaiians have a deep sense of spirituality sure. and you find it wherever you find it. And, exactly. and who's to say where you're going to find yours? And the point is that just kako or support each other mm -hmm. to make sure that every each finds their own mm -hmm. and not to impose your own on anyone else. Yeah, so I, I think because of that, the aloha in my family has grown so strong that we respect each other and there's never really a big issue for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all headed the same way. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's, I, it's I, the I, path. It's the destination sure, is the same, but sure. it's the path that you take to get there. Well, I've heard a lot of families who uh, would go to, depending upon where they were, were at any given time, would go to whatever church uh, and, yeah. and feel totally comfortable there. Just like, get the not message. Not a problem, you know? right? As you say, not an issue. Well, because that's, uh, that translates to other um, areas. You know, is respecting your your leader or your kumu. Um, mm -hmm. As in a church, you have different leaders and if you have that faith then it's going to carry you. The same thing with other things that are Hawaiian, you know, if you learn hula, you know, sometimes you're going to find your one kumo that right. it just hit, you know, hits your soul on a spot and I mean it just does it for you and right. and in some people it, it takes them a long time to search and find yeah. um, and, it, and it, there's, you cannot say that any one kumo hula is better than the other or mm -hmm. knows more or everybody just knows different and yeah. so it's the one you find that you have that connection with it that serves your purpose and your needs. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Uh, you know, what is that phrase interpreted as uh, all a knowledge? Ka yeah. Ka halau ho yeah. Yeah. Exactly, all, all knowledge is not found within one halau. Although some Kumo may not agree with that, right. that I've met, but I, that's an interesting uh, analogy. That uh, sometimes you're lucky you hit it right off the first time, and right. sometimes you have to kind of uh, search out until you make that link. But sometimes, like, what I've grown to learn is that the knowledge of the ike and the na'awau that's out there, sometimes you're not ready for it. Right. And sometimes, you know, you, you go, you're going to have to, like on Pico, you're going to have to come around in mm -hmm. that swing of that circle mm -hmm. in a bigger, wider spectrum, and then you're going to get it. Yeah. And I don't know, in its own time, and in its own deliver, like, somebody can, I see that with my kids, like, I, t I can <laughs> say something to them, they don't listen, and then sure. the dad can say the same thing, and mm -hmm. in the same way, for mm -hmm. some reason, and they listen, or they understand, and, yeah. and being a teacher, I find that too, that sometimes, I don't know what it is, it's mm -hmm. just the connection that, that yeah. you make. Well, it's interesting to say, in, a, in its own time, you know, when you discover something. Uh, Might not some be pono right then and Yeah, there. exactly, and you may not be ready for it. Right. So... But I think it's important to always keep looking and being aware and preparing right. yourself for whenever that happens or link up. Sometimes you have to learn it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Relearn. And yes, uh, because lots of things in life have kauna and, and different meanings and different truths revealed. And yeah. you can have an experience, you know, like, I don't know, going up to Kalau Papa, mm -hmm. look out. Mm -hmm. You know, you stand up there, I see something where they go, I don't, you can go up there over and over again. Every time you go up there, you have a different feeling. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you, you know, the memories that come up or the feelings that come up, it reflects. And the more you learn, like before I used to go up as a little kid and think, wow, cool, pretty. Yeah. And then when you learn the history of the area, mm -hmm. then it takes on a different shape. Then when you actually meet people from down there or you've actually been down there, right. the next time you see it from the lookout, it has a totally different feel to it. And um, I don't know, it's just an example of how you can come around in different uh, circles to the same thing. And, Grow. And being receptive to right. these different and nuances. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that lookout has a, a particular meaning for me. Uh, several years, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, uh, Uncle Henry Nalaia Lua was yeah. uh, was down there at the time, and he arranged for us to uh, do a tour topside. You know, and he took us all over. Terrific tour guide. And then he says, uh, "How do you guys want to go down yeah. below?" And I said, "Well." Why don't we take the trail? He said, I said, oh, mule. They got mules, right? <laughs> so I said, yeah. He says, uh, let me talk to the mule train guy. So he called, and they called back, and he said, the guy wants to know how much you guys weigh. So <laughs> I told him, and he called back, and he said, the man with the mule said, uh, put your wife on your back. And he says, he doesn't want you riding his mule. <laughs> and I was only about 300 pounds at the time. <laughs> but at any rate, in order for us to go down the trail on foot, you know, at that time the, the mules were running. And so you only had so much time before, between when one train went down and the next one left. Right. And you had to make it down in between. You ever go down like that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've never been between them. No. Mule trains, yeah. 
Well, at any rate, I think you got about 45 minutes. And uh, then if you're not down, you got to get out of the side, and there's no place to go because they just run right. over you. Know, so. <laughs> but it was good fun. So that's, that's pretty, And going down that way was really important, too. You know, actually traveling the trail. I did the same thing in Waipio. I walked down. Right. And yeah. it beats. Lovely. Oh, you cannot experience it any other way right. and get the same feeling. You know, the back of a pickup yeah. truck is easy, but you can you really sense You don't hear the and you don't smell the things and exactly. feel you the essence feel of the, the forest. And mm -hmm. I don't know. As you were talking, you mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned children. You, know, you mentioned teaching. Uh, we haven't met before, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm listening to the things that you're talking about, and, and as we come forward and kind of finding about who you are, grew up here, obviously, Keiki Oka'aina for real. I mean, you have lines going back in all directions here on Molokai, but, and you were schooled here, but did you go away at any time? I did. I went to Kualapu Elementary. At the time, there was no immersion school. Now it's home to the... Kulokai Puni on the island. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Molokai High and Intermediate School for seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I wound up up Kapalama Heights. <laughs> oh, um, they have a school up there on top, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard because for seventh grade, they only take um, three students from the whole island. And they alternate two girls and a boy, two boys and a girl. Mm -hmm. And um, the year that I tried out for seventh grade, um, the two girls that um, preference is given for children are considered orphaned or from broken homes, right. and so they those slice, the, the slots are filled with with other right. people. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, how come I gotta have a perfect family? <laughs> 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 I want to go. Uh, yeah. And so in eighth, when I tried out to go eighth grade, they um, they again declined me, and I I argued my way in pretty much. Mm. I wrote letters to all the people up there. And you took that on yourself to do that? Yeah, because I wanted to go real bad. My yeah. older brothers and sisters wanted to, um, my older brothers and sisters went, my dad went, my grandfather, I mean, everybody in my family went. Tradition, huh? And I wanted to go. That's and good for you. more so, I just saw, um, I don't know, there was some, I just wanted to go away. I just wanted At to learn. Grade. I just wanted to mm -hmm. see the world. And I, and I got to do that. And I'm so glad that I, I mean, I know if I stayed home, I would have had a great education and mm -hmm. a great experience anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but there were just things I wanted to do that I couldn't do here. Yeah. And I, at that age, I knew, I knew what I wanted to do. And so um, when I went to Kamehameha, probably the, my greatest experience was, because we were talking about this, I went um, on a study abroad to the Cook Islands. Oh I lived no, in Rarotonga yeah. for my junior year. I went to school oh, there. Oh, I didn't know that when yeah. we were talking. I was doing all the talking and not listening. <laughs> no, no, no. I just yeah. I was like, I know Rarotonga very well. Yeah. Um, but it's those kinds of opportunities that um, I could take advantage of that I couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was on Molokai, and I, I grew up with my grandmother, um, Harriet Ne, who um, had a many kuleana, and one of which was to take care of the Makahiki grounds and up at Naiva. Right. And so I got to hear these stories over and over again mm -hmm. and she would take us on during the summer she we would have Hawaiian summer school and she uh, she had like Hawaiian school like how you have Japanese school right. in Hawaii like right. after school all the Japanese kids go to Japanese school yeah. she wanted to have Hawaiian school mm -hmm. so all the Hawaiian kids mm -hmm. had some place to go and learn the culture and language mm -hmm. and, and so, she, she would, so she did that right and so she always said you go learn you go learn and mm -hmm. um, and you she know, always told me that I was going to be, she wanted me to be a teacher, she wanted mm -hmm. me to learn language, she wanted me to learn, all these different things, um, some of which I fulfilled and some I haven't, I'm still working on, so, mm -hmm. um, but she definitely has set the pace for me. Well, is this part of what you said, you knew what you wanted to do at the, in the eighth grade, is that uh -huh. part of what you knew you were going to do? Mm -hmm. And in fact, when I, I was in you. high school, I went to this, like, leadership camp and you had to write your goals on a piece of wood and your right. barriers on the other side and you had right. to break it with your hand. And like symbolize you breaking through your barriers to get to your goal. And mm -hmm. on the other side was to go to college and to be one day be a punana leo teacher. <laughs> and and I did those things. Mm -hmm. well, good. <laughs> and I just I I always keep, kept that board and because at 15, 16 years old, I, mm -hmm. I already knew I was gonna do these things. I mean, I don't know. Do you, you realize how lucky you are though to have had uh, had a focus, had a, identified your kuleana early? Because yeah. some people. So, well, you know, I, I, I resisted at first because growing up with her, I always thought, oh, 
oh, it's so boring, like hearing the same thing over and over again. And, mm -hmm. um, and there were times like, like I wanted to be an astronaut until um, 1986 in the Challenger, and I was like, okay, I don't like yeah, to be an astronaut. Yeah, that was a, that was a shocker. One, and I, but I remember that fifth grade sitting there watching it over and over mm -hmm. again. I was mm -hmm. like, can't only be that. You know, I just so, thought these other dreams coming. So when you were it. young, you didn't see that there were any barriers to whatever you wanted to do. Not I mean, really. you thought of becoming an astronaut, perhaps. Yeah. Well, Why that's not? Uh, that's another thing that you're really lucky because some people grow up feeling that they're limited in what they can do. You can't. Well, part of our like, series is to let people know, hey, you can you do, can do anything. anything. You can do anything. Yeah. And that's what I've actually. I, well, okay, let me just kind of continue on. After I left Kamehameha, I went to uh, UH Manoa to mm -hmm. take up Hawaiian language, and I wasn't sure what field or what I wanted to do with it, but right. I knew that if I had that, then I could do pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And um, one of, you know, I started teaching and I started doing, um, teaching Hawaiian language, adult education, and I started teaching all different kinds of people. So I wound up at Punana, I've taught in Kayapuni, like in, uh, I've taught at UH, mm -hmm. I've taught in um, adult education, and mm -hmm. I kind of found that I really like working with adults. Um, and other, I don't know, I just didn't want to spend time in the classroom. and. Hmm. I like to do things that are out of the box, and, yeah. and um, I really enjoy teaching through experiences and not teaching from the book. And so, like in my class, there's no writing, there's no textbooks. It's yeah. all right here. So, if you're gonna learn language, then uh, that's interesting. You know, we uh, we talked with uh, Kupuna Kawila earlier, and of course, maybe she even taught you. I don't know, uh, but she enjoys being in the classroom, and you're. Kind of like a, a different, different approach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what do you think? <laughs> let me ask you this. Uh, what do you know, or, or what do you think about the uh, uh, Nale the uh, charter schools in Hawaii, the, the Hawaiian charter schools? Primarily? Do you know anything about them? Um, a little bit. Um, I think charter schools are great if they're done right. I think they provide us the opportunity to educate our children. Um, on everything that's important, both Western and um, Hawaiian education, but delivered in a medium that's more, um, it's like say, it's the same thing about finding um, the right kumwen, that making that right, connection. Right. For some students, the, the standard DOE system is fine, and for some, it isn't, and mm -hmm. it's just having that choice that you can find your halau that mm -hmm. really makes a connection for you. And that's why the diversity of charter schools, because there's all kinds of uh, formats, I'm finding that once they get really established, the, it's going to be great for our, all our children, mm -hmm. Hawaiian and non-Hawaiian. I mean, like, all our children are going to benefit. Yeah. The community as a whole is going to benefit. Mm -hmm. and the, it just well, I, I think, uh, as I understand it, uh, one of the positive things about the concept is that the community establishes, Determine. determines, yeah, the approach. Uh, obviously, they it have is. to perform. It's a form, yeah. It is a form of self-determination, yeah. and, it's, and, it's, and it's us finding a remedy going, okay, these are the needs of our people, and mm -hmm. this is how we're going to meet them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most basic, basic of foundations is education. You have yeah. to empower your children to grow up, to really believe in who they are, to mm -hmm. you know, have this security and this, and this identity. Mm -hmm. And from that, to view the world with them you know, here and not mm -hmm. as an outsider or through someone else's eyes and being able to understand that. Well, I love your optimism. Uh, because I've talked with educators, uh, formal educators, who claim that there are only certain things, certain ways that all children learn, and that's the way it is. And well, I personally, don't think so. I don't either. <laughs> and, and so I'm glad to hear that you have this. this and broad, that was kind of the point of me be te trying out teaching at different levels was mm -hmm. because if I can see what happens at the the, the three-year-old, what right. happens to the three-year-old, that affects what happens to the 60-year-old. Sure. Because I talk to them and I figure out their learning experiences and how they learned when they were in elementary right. school and right. the differences now, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I don't know, it's, um, <laughs> charter school's got to be good. Again. Well, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> I know, you know, in the United States, uh, North America, uh, you know, there's been uh, charter schools have gone through their thing there, too. And I, I know there have to be some successes there, but I know there have been a lot of problems in that. But I think some of it may have to do with this community aspect of charter school. Because there's a lot of places in the states, 
where you don't have the, the close-knit community right. that's required to. As a matter of fact, I heard uh, of a couple of charter schools that were actually being managed by like corporate managers, right. administrators, who of course have accountants watching the bottom line. And, and what happens? How, you know, how does a community benefit from that type of approach? Mm -hmm. That's like. Uh, well, I think. I cannot speak for any other Aina except for this Aina, mm -hmm. and I know one thing. This mm -hmm. is not a transient community. Yeah. Um, and that's what we got going for us. The families that are here have been here for right. ages, right. and they will be for many more and more years to come. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at our history and, it's, and the legacy we've inherited and, and look together. The same people that looked mm -hmm. together 100 years ago were the same, the same people looking ahead mm -hmm. for the next 100 years and mm -hmm. going, okay, this is what we want. And it's easier. Like with our community um, development projects and all these the EC things, all mm -hmm. these other projects mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. it's easy for us because we all pretty much know where everyone's coming from. Mm -hmm. And we can actually sit at the table and have these discussions because we, we know everything in your closet and we know everything in his closet. Sure. You know, yeah. and we know everybody's agenda. Yeah, everything's bare. You know. Right, it's <laughs> out. So when we're talking, we know that we're, we're healo, healo, we're yep. up face to face. And there's no, and it's not like, you can beg and, and hide from us, yeah, you know. No <laughs> it's easy to hold people accountable for things. Mm -hmm. And and I appreciated that living in on Oahu, I had a hard time when I had my children. Just the first couple of years, I had a hard time just looking at life, and I just had to bring them home and, mm -hmm. and have that, you know, like over here, you, you leave your son somewhere, or your son, you know, things out. It's okay. It's okay, because yeah. they, they, somebody going to bring them yeah, home. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it, takes, it takes a community. I mean, it is. This but is if there's good. no community there, you've got we problems. Well, I, I don't mean to be hung no. up on uh, charter schools, but is there a charter school on, on uh, Moja? We have a conversion. Um, Kualapu School, the, the, where the immersion school is held, mm -hmm. um, has just applied and, and been that, sanctified or whatever mm -hmm. to become mm -hmm. a conversion charter school. Mm -hmm. um, so they're in the process of trying to figure out how to make that change. Now. Well, I was wondering as I was asking the question or as it was forming in my mind, I was kind of wondering uh, if because of the community involvement on Molokai, you know, I, I recounted somebody about passing Kulano over the other night and it was just jammed. I mean, people turn out, you don't see other, you don't see that kind of turnout. And I was wondering as even as I thought about charter schools, a, a, a good mix for Molokai that maybe because of the community involvement, uh, those dynamics are already manifesting themselves. I don't know. What is. You, maybe it's already being done. Yeah, and actually this year we have another school, alternative school, opening up for a middle school. Our high school is splitting and creating a separate middle school. Um, so the education options are kind of growing now because, like I said, there's a need, and mm -hmm. the demand, and the mm -hmm. community will respond. And there are the movers and shakers that make things happen. And and it can be somebody simple, you know, who just thinks, I can do this in my backyard. And, mm -hmm. and that's, I know people who do that. They, they had a hard time getting their children to preschool. They said, I just go make a way in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And so they got co four other families to bring their kids and three times a week they and meet they and it. they have activities right yep. in the yard and they take excursions yep. and you're going, that's a need. And they're, mm -hmm. they're supporting each other to mm -hmm. just do it on their own. You cannot always look for a government grant or a, program somebody, somebody else to, to come and you, serve yeah. you, you yeah. do them. Well, I know with the Native Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian Education Council, we, um, when we first started kind of visioning, you know, and, and establishing goals and so forth, one of them was to have a freestanding Native Hawaiian education system. Uh, I always thought, or I've been thinking that perhaps charter schools is something that might fill that kind maybe. of an option, maybe. Charter schools is open to anybody and yeah, anything. Yeah, true, true. Um, but when, you, when we look at the, across the state of Hawaii, uh, majority of Native Hawaiian kids are in public school, so somehow we have to address those right. kids somehow. And it sounds like there's a pretty good job being done here on, on Molokai. I think so, and I think we have a lot of, I mean, I remember when I was in high school, the summer, like options, uh, uh, extracurricular programs and things like that, they were so limited. Mm -hmm. And now I have, I have to fight for time with my high school students. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned that you're teaching. You, you prefer to you find a, uh, a relationship with teaching adults? Is that yeah, what you said? Yeah, and, or and high school students. But high school? For older. teaching Hawaiian language, yeah. teaching mm -hmm. adults. Um, but 
My job now, I'm the site coordinator for Nafono Eo, oh. um, which gives me the opportunity to provide these different kinds of learning experiences. Mm -hmm. And really, mm -hmm. so this past week, for example, we took, um, I wanted students to explore the corners of the island. Mm -hmm. So how can you go off and see the world if you haven't seen the Your backside own. of Molokai? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if people can pay big money to take vacations and to come here, to come here, and you're already here, <laughs> right? And you're already here. How yeah. come you never see that yeah. yet? So yeah. we, I ran up 15 high school students who said, "Yeah, shoot, we go." And mm -hmm. I was like, "Okay, it's a lot of hiking. It's yeah. a lot of you know, because all these places are far, far to, and yeah. hard to get to." Yeah. And they did it and. It's those kinds of things that, I mean, they came away with so much more than I expected them to. Yeah. And a lot of it had to do with pride and, and just recognizing that, it's, I don't know, it's also, I just keep thinking self-determination, like they just, yeah. self -determination. this is my aina and this is my mo'olelo and this is my kupuna and mm -hmm. this is, it's mine and I need to know it and I need to love it. And, and teach it. And teach it. And and when they come back and or I hear these parents coming back and they're like, you know, I nev my son is so lazy, or yeah. they never get to, they <laughs> never want to do that kind of stuff. And, you know, they come home, they're all excited. I'm like, motivated. yeah, you know, motivated. even if one, one child comes back and is like so stoked that they learned something about their kupuna, yeah. like right on. That's fantastic. We're, we're winding up our time, but I think the, the message has come through clear, loud and clear, as I mentioned at the beginning. What our purpose is, is to motivate towards the ultimate future for Native Hawaiians. And I think you're, you're doing it and experiencing it, enjoying it. It's obvious you're enjoying <laughs> it too. So I want to thank you for being with Hi. us, uh, Miki Ala. Mahalo Nui. Mahalo. And we'd like to thank all of you who are watching for being here once again with us, Voices of Truth. This is Kai Opua Fife with the Kawani Foundation. Tune into our next segment, now being broadcast throughout the state of Hawaii on all public access channels. Mahalo. Ahui ho.